Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas with theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is the president of the EMC CTD, the Emerging Technologies Group. I mean, I'm sorry, the core, what's it? Core, core Technology Technologies Division, Division which is the bulk of the yeah. assets. Guy Church, welcome back to theCUBE. You just gave me CJ's assets as well. <laughs> <laughs> Does he know this? <laughs> so, okay, first, because we've been. He's coming on later. Well, the best part of theCUBE is like, we get the, we yeah, get the just piece. Just let him know, don't worry about it. <laughs> <I> <laughs> about that stuff as It'll well. We'll be all reorganized anyway. But you got to explain to the folks out there what you, you're holding on in terms of the assets. VMAX, Stream.io, you have a chunk of the, the yeah, major so, bread and butter. So if you think data protection plus I just call it primary, primary. And on data protection, it's the usual stuff I had before, which is DPAD. So, you know, data main, and the, and uh, you know, Networker, Avamar, and then the cloud assets we have, a couple of the acquisitions that we did, uh, VFlex recover point, and then into the primary storage, then it's VMAX, and the VNX, and the Extreme IO. So enterprise block-based execution, plus the, you know, obviously you got the workhorse around the VNX. Okay, so everyone wants all flash arrays. That's clear from the markets. You see out there, all flash arrays are going to be the big growth engine, and you got the core business over here, which is the bread and butter, but also not necessarily declining. But some will say, is that challenged by the growth? Explain the dynamic between, like, say, Vmax and, and Extreme IO, and the opportunity on the integration side. Because Stephen was on, or Stephen Mann was on earlier talking about the benefits of multi-architecture. Explain: is it, is it a mutually exclusive situation? Does one eat the other's lunch? Is, are they coexisting? So, so, I, so I'm following Stephen, <laughs> and I've really got to kind of ratify what he said. <laughs> Did he talk about Quidditch? <laughs> we played the Quidditch against him or not? Is that a new product? We gonna yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. it kind of goes like this, which is, um, um, and again, I've got a blog where I wrote on cameras of all things, um, but and, and and the point was, I uh, I saw an article that said that. Um, on Flickr, the second most popular camera brand was the iPhone. And you think it's kind of natural, right? So therefore, why isn't everything just iPhones and cameras? Well, because there are certain circumstances and situations that you don't take a photograph of just an iPhone. You, you're not going to take a photograph and print it out and stick it on your wall. Yeah. And similarly, like if you're going to go to you know, the new baby, the raw baby's born, you're not going to see the paparazzi literally with iPhones hanging them over the window trying they to take photographs. The DSLRs are high-end cameras. This, so, so that's the point. So digital SLR, where you've got the separation of basically the lens and the body, think of that like a large scale array. And that's what VMAX 3's done. You've, you separate the two and you can get the value. Then you look at things like mirrorless, which is really cool technology, and it looks like it's going to take the world by storm. That's Extreme IO, dedicated to what it does. Very high performance, very agile, very small, compact, executes extremely well. And then you've got the other side, which is really into the conversion, hyper-conversion. There's coexistence, but last year this was a software message, yeah. okay? What, what's going on with software, and how does that relate to this information generation messaging? I mean, what's your take on the software innovation in your group? What's going on? Well, Can you so, share some insights? Yeah, so I mean, you've also got to look at, I mean, I asked the question just before I came out here to each of the team members and said, what percentage of your engineers are hardware engineers? Because I thought it was an interesting question because EMC is seen as being a big tin shipper. Yeah. You know, if you look at the stage, I still have big bits of yeah. iron sitting on the stage. <laughs> Less than 1% of my engineers are hardware uh, engineers. Uh, wow, I was going to say 80% software. Was, you're saying it's 99% Less than 1%. Engineers. Wow. You know, so, so you look at it and you then yeah. say to yourself, you're either a company that believes it's all about the hardware, right, and software's yeah. there as a necessary evil to make the hardware work, or you're a software organization and you need to embody it in something to instantiate that. Yeah. And so what you really do is you say, we're a software organization, but at the end of the day you have the instantiation hardware, but we have a clear directive to say everything we produce, we have a software version of it. So at the show we're talking about VVNX. You know, I'm actually want to move towards a data domain, a software version of data domain, so you've got DDBE. And even Avamar, I mean, you guys have been kicking around enough with our products, you know Avamar when we bought it was software, yep. right? We made it hardware, and now we've made it back software again, and we use data domain at the back end. So for me, it's one of those ones that says, I can afford, because of the size and scale of EMC, to produce the solutions that customers That's want. That's a consumption dynamic, though, because they want to buy, in a composite way, service-oriented architectures to cloud. Is that the buyer behavior, or just natural margins or economics? I, you know, the thing is, everybody has their own flavor of what it is. It's yeah. like, if I said to you, what do you believe cloud is? And I asked Dave, what do you believe cloud is? The answers will be absolutely different. There's a guarantee. Yeah. And when we talk to a customer, they're basically saying, look, I don't want to spend as much on what I'm spending it on. 
I need to basically dedicate myself. I know I need to do something with cloud. I want simplification. I think maybe software is going to be faster moving and more agile, but you know, prove it to me. So you really need to produce that. And so for instance, here's, a, here's an interesting one for you. Uh, we sat down as a customer advisory, we're talking about a data domain, which is a hardware box. And I've been scared of saying, well, you know, should we pull the software out? What would it do? And so I, I asked the customers, I said, uh, you know, put your hands up, who wants a data domain of virtual edition? Every single hand went up. And I said, okay, so who believes that they would replace their current data domain setup with a software version, not a single hand? And then asked the question, which is, who believes that they can actually make a virtual, uh, you know, a system, a data domain system? better than we can or cheaper than us or from a total cost of ownership, the same thing, not a single hand went up. So I said, why the hell do you want it? Right, because back no, to that's that the obvious thing. question. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and what they basically said is for remote, for a robo situation, let's say I set up an office in Malaysia, I actually want to do backup from it, I want a data domain system over there, for right now with data domain, I've actually got a provision system and ship yeah. it across and I've got all of that hassle, or the other one is fire one up. And then do all of the paperwork in the background, then flip it for a hard system. So, so you're I, increasing uh, capabilities then. And agile. Yeah. I got to ask you, so when you took over the <laughs> data protection group, you had this sort of Avamar data domain, little tiny integration problem compared to what you're facing now. As an executive, how do you approach that? You seem like pretty even keeled, you got a great sense of humor, you don't seem stressed out, and maybe, maybe that's the way you are in public, I don't know, but <laughs> you have a massive <laughs> challenge. How do you approach that? Now, I guess you start with the customer and work back. That's sort of a obvious answer, but Still, there's a lot of integration that has to take, take place. You guys have been talking about architecture. How do you, where did you start? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult. I mean, it really is, there's no, no getting around that. But, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the problem is this, which is if you've got the attitude of, I'm scared of it, in other words, I'm not going to tackle it, you die. Yeah. Right, so in other words, standing still, you're dead. So you have to know that you're moving forward. And then you really look at it and say, how far can I go before, before I have to make a decision that goes a fork in the road and I go left or right? Yeah. And, and what people generally do is they kind of get to the fork in the road and left and right, and they put a foot in both sides and they straddle it and then they die anyway. And yeah, so fence sitting, the right. worst strategy. And, and so, so for me, I kind of look at it and go, okay, so I get a hunch on the back of it. Then I have idiots like Manly that I spend a lot of time with. And I literally then test the the theory with him and then we, we solicit, so we do it as a group and then we get to a disagree and commit and then we move forward. But I would advocate that the problem is never technology and it's never the customer because the customer's clear of what they want. The problem is the people internally, it's the employees because we get very comfortable. If you think about yourselves, you know, there's a, there's a lot of stuff you've done, like the cloud chat stuff that you've done recently, it's fabulous. But at the end of the day, if you believed the formula of your organization was right in the first place, you would have never got there. So you have to continually look at it and go, how do we switch it up, how do we change, how do we become relevant? So the market's moving somewhere. If I stay where we are, we're dead. I have to move forward. So for me, the decisions are easy. It's just the fact that at some point, inevitably, and most of the businesses I picked up have got to that point where they've straddled because now they have to make a tough decision and we do it as a group. And I have, a, I have an absolute world-class executive management team. You know, so the reason I'm actually more relaxed than I should be is because I lean on them, and they're the guys that are leaving all the sleep. <laughs> you know, but, but I, I sincerely. So they're stressed out. <laughs> yeah, they're stressed out, that's right. <laughs> yeah, and so, so, so it is what it is. Okay, so you got VMAX 3, and you seem to be positioning that as the this, this services platform Yeah. for those who want to make a return on that asset that they have in place. You've got, maybe talk through the portfolio and the strategy, and help us sort of squint through. Yeah, so, so I mentioned on the cameras, and I'm going to stay on it because I like to be a yeah, bit yeah, bizarre great. with you guys. But I've got a Canon EOS, you know, the digital camera with the lens and the, and the body. So you think about it, when, when I wanted to go into proper photography, uh, a, a guy, a friend of mine said, spend all the money on the lenses and none on the back because the back's your flip. So you think of the back as a storage, but you think of the lenses of data services. If you think of VMAX 3, VMAX 3 is about the data services it provides. So if you then look through the lens, and I've invested in the lenses, and you look through the VMAX 3 ideal, what you really want to say is, hey, could I layer those data services on top of anything else that I bring through? Because I've already got the investment. And that's really the VMAX side. So I, 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 went, I was out in Arizona last week and chatting with some customers, and one of them turned around and said, so it's kind of like VCE for an enterprise. You know, I mean, that was their term, and it's actually a converged storage infrastructure play. 
So that's what VMAX will do. It's very highly resilient. It's all about their core DNA. But the idea is, can you flip the back end to be anything you want, you know, and offer that service? If you look at something like Extreme IO, you know what they're trying to do. You know where they're trying to execute, and that will be a very high scale, very high performance block-based workload for the enterprise, right? There is not now a reason why you wouldn't deploy on it for that scale. Back to your AFA is going to take over the world. For block, definitely. Yeah. Now, every AFA is rushing up the data services to try and fulfill their promise. One of the things that we have as a unique opportunity within Extreme is its architecture such that I can run all the data services and not have a latency issue. Whereas every other AFA, if you actually load it up with the data services, put mixed workload, they just evaporate. So it'll never get there. Yeah, explain the company. Let's talk about the competition. That's good. You mentioned uh, AFA, all flash array, is going to dominate the world. I believe that to be the case. Um, and I think a lot of people, David Floyer would agree as well. Mm -hmm. That, But the competition, What's what do you guys say to that? I mean, there's some people out there nipping at your heels, stealing some crumbs off the table from breakfast, a little croissant here or there. They're trying to eat your lunch and then dinner. And EMC's always had that ability to move fast and outpace the competition. So what do you say to the customers out there who are getting knocked on the door saying, hey, we're looking at XYZ for all flash array? So, so here's the thing is, Extreme is built as an extreme AFA. It's a very high scale, very high performance. You know, you now get petabyte scale size. It's got 16 controllers, you've got eight pairs on the back of it, they're all active, and it will redistribute load across that. So you will never have an issue with latency spikes, right? So in other words, less than a millisecond latency. Every other AFA is basically a cheap and deep. Couple of, a couple of controllers, and then basically stack it up with cheap and deep SSDs. So it's great for bang for the buck. So you go in there and you basically turn around and say, dollar per gig is a great platform, it does the job. But that's very different because what you get from Extreme will transform your data center. So if I, so if I hear you correctly, okay, I might be price sensitive, I'll go with the, you know, the, the cheap car or the cheap camera, and then, but as I become more pro, if you will, to use your camera analogy, you have more constraints, more challenges, more need, right? Right. So is that what you're saying, is that those customers might have a headroom issue, or is it? It's just, I mean, they're absolutely out of gas. I mean, the, the, the boxes that we've got now, as I said, the, the beast that we just launched is two million IOPS. At best guess, even on their optimistic side, there are 150,000 IOPS. There's a big difference between the two. Now, if you're looking at cheap and deep, then we've got things like the VNXE or the VNXF. In other words, all flash arrays, fly, you know, file and block at the really yeah. cheap and deep side. And then even if you look at things like VMAX, over 50% of the storage media that we shipped on VMAX yeah. in Q1 was actually flash. So that's the portfolio advantage of your roadmap. You guys can address it, so you can address those concerns. Okay. And, th and that's the point. And then you look at it and you say, okay, so now we've, yeah. that's extreme IO, and that's where we're on the VMAX. Then you look at VNX, right? And yeah. on the VNX side, the only thing I say is this, which is I don't fundamentally agree with the idea of a Swiss Army knife. You know, because if you kind of think about yeah. it, everybody everybody talks, it's a really, it's a kind of like a kitsch thing that people talk about forever. But if you look yeah. in your house, you've got one, and it's got a logo of a company that you got given as a gift, and you do not use it, right? And, and you know, I look at it and go, I think it's disingenuous yeah. for us to call VMAX, uh, VNX that platform. 1,292 customers net new to EMC last quarter, which is basically bang for the buck, utilitarian, yeah. in the SME space, and it's with people who've got file and block. All right, so you got a lot That's of product there, you got a lot of solution sets, you got some good competitive strategy. Dave hates this term I call data fabric, but there's lack of a better description. There's an overlay of data issues happening across whatever functional solution set. And you got Pivotal, you got the Federation at your resources, so what's your conversation like across the Federation and your ecosystem around data fabric, if you will, those kinds of new solutions, big data analytics, because you got security, you got data protection issues on there, so you yeah. have a lot of kind of overlapping kind of interdependencies, depending on which part of your products, whether it's VNX, VMAX, or Extreme. Right. You're playing with data horizontally. Yeah, but, and I don't know if you chatted with Stephen about metadata, um, but one of the things, you're right, so, so one of the things you look at and you go, metadata, 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 metadata becomes yeah. king. Right, you really need to know what's happening, where it's happening, and there's multiple layers, there's actually four layers that you need to yeah. kind of abstract to. Um, and as you said, we have probably the best story in the industry from an EMC Federation point of view. And then it comes down to that same thing, which is you mentioned competition. Single biggest competitor for EMC, in my opinion, is EMC. Because if you think about it, we've got best of breed technologies and we're going gunning after these, but customers want to buy outcomes. And the important thing for us to do is to engineer combinations yeah. and the blurs. That's why things like protect points are so important. 
because you've thrown all of that loop of things like the backup server out and you spit direct from a VMAX to a data So is that a solutions answer or is that an architectural answer? I think both? it goes, it depends yeah. on where you're doing. You're basically double clicking down. You just look at it and say, look, I'm a, I'm a IT executive. My CIO's come to me and said, cloud looks like the way to go. Go figure it out and if you don't, then someone else is going to do it to you. You know, and so what they're really doing is saying, I need to buy an outcome. I've got to buy more of a combination from people. I want st strategic business partners that are going to allow me to help me to counsel me through the fog. That is specifically what they're looking for. You know, and the tighter we can combine and integrate the technologies, the better. And that goes from the backup pieces to the primary storage, backup and primary storage, right the way up into the metadata layers, the big data, and then up into you know, the federation with you know, so VMware. So when you said EMC's competitors itself, what you're saying is there's a cannibalization mindset that if you don't cannibalize your own kind of core, older, transforming businesses with software or... I well, mean, part, of that, part of that is, is yes, and part of that is the fact that you know, it's very easy to just stay where you are, and this market's moving fast, and EMC yeah. must continue to move fast. So the, the great news is we're not worried about cannibalizing ourselves. Right? So In don't words, hold on to the sacred cows. That's the point. And that's exactly it, which is, you know, you just think that the attitude of this organization is continually moving forward, right? And we need to answer that. And we'll do acquisitions, we'll have products that overlap, but there's only one thing that's worse than overlap. Well, you got a hot product, Extreme IO's nice locomotive. And this is going crazy. <laughs> this thing's just going off the charts. You Share know, some so insights. You so you can't protect the past from the future, as they say. There was a little bit of la that last year at EMC World, I have to say. Um, and the like mindset. What? Well, David Goulden stood up and he was touting IDC data. The IDC still hasn't changed the data, but it says that 17% of the revenue will be flash in 2017. Personally, I think it's way, way, way understated. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but that message has flipped. When you talk mm -hmm. to EMC customers now, you guys seem to be leading. You're certainly not hiding the extreme IO piece. No. Being much more aggressive about that. Yeah, and then even things to the cloud. So in other words, the, the encapsulation is yeah. very simple for me. Here's the dead simple strategy for me, right? On a storage perspective, I've basically got to do two things, which is I need to simplify and I need to automate because people will want to be their own service provider. Yes. Then I need to make sure that they have a path to the cloud, whether that's ours or whether that's somebody else, it doesn't matter. Everything a I path, do just has to be a path to the cloud, otherwise checkbox is gone. And then the next box around is I have to protect it no matter where it is. And, and that's it, and it's very, very, very simple. And that's a nice, nice differentiation for you guys, because you have software now, <laughs> so cloud sure. is remote capability, right. cloud enables you to do cooler things remotely. Right. So we got to talk to Pat about that tomorrow, right? Because the <laughs> EMC, uh, the VMware line of, what is, it, what is it, one cloud, any app, any device, right? But Look at the agile native app thing, right. story. It's not, there's not one cloud. No. Right, now Pat will have an answer, and he'll like, school us. Because <laughs> yeah, that's what Pat does. <laughs> but, um, but customers, they have multiple clouds. They got their SaaSes, they got their HR cloud, they got their IT service management cloud, they got their you know, manufacturing cloud. And, and one of the sneaky products that we actually launched out recently is a thing called DP Search that allows you, no matter where your data is, to do a Google search against it. So you literally can look Dave slash PowerPoint in November. And it, it doesn't matter where it is. It, whether it's in the cloud or it's in the internally, it'll find it. You can get it, you can download that's it, a killer you can email app. it to something. That's basically Google search in the legacy. And that's the point. Yeah. And so, so yeah. each of the groups are innovating severely towards that thing, which is simplify, automate, part of the cloud, well, I mean, the data. automation, you need discovery and you need navigation, right? I mean, that's right. a search concept. That's and not necessarily a, a and, you know. And if you don't have the metadata and you don't have yeah. the catalog, you can't search for the rich data that you actually need. And the faster you can get it, the better you can move on. So, so this is kind of the strategy, and this is why we pulled the pieces what together. What holds you back, what holds customers back from getting that metadata, metadata, metadata nirvana? Where do they, I mean, that's the holy grail. So what is that stumbling block for the customer? So, <laughs> The sad thing is I'm going to say the same thing, which is basically it's the technology, right? Because everybody believes what they do is right. So, I mean, we've talked about this before with backup, which is how do you get the formats into a standard format for you to allow you to drill the information? So it's just normalizing this. So right now, Stephen, one of, he's got this called the Architecture, Architecture Leadership Forum, and, and he runs this across my group to make sure we don't reinvent the wheel anywhere. Yeah. But a part of it is one of the big initiatives is to make sure that we normalize metadata so that it doesn't matter which product it is. And this is not just CTD, this is ETD yeah. and out into the federation. 
there's a whole metadata standard strategy that we're actually driving forward, and we want it to be open. So it's, it's not going to be proprietary to EMC, but the intent is to say, how do we manage our assets better and then create a faster outcome for our customers? So what's uh, the internal, we got one minute left, share with us your objectives for the year. As an executive, you got your top three things to do. What are your um, key things that are near and dear to your heart in terms of go to market, new product introductions, marketing, um, cloud focus, data focus, what's the, share this your kind of like simple back of the napkin. <laughs> 30 seconds on the back of this, pretty simple. I've That's got the a other map. cube. That's I, the other cube. <laughs> we have right. one minute. Okay, we've got a minute. <laughs> I, I've got it on the block business, which is basically VMAX, VNX at the high end and Extreme IO. That's going to be net positive business. Doesn't matter where it floats to, I need to make sure we do that. Therefore, we've got to articulate a portfolio message and drive the products like crazy. I don't want to constrain Extreme IO at all, and that needs to become extremely aggressive and then into the mainstream of what you've seen. Yeah. You know, we're driving that. Data protection needs to club on as fast as possible, needs a scale out model, want to get virtualized into it, simplification at the back end, and then I need to make sure that we drive the cloud. Three acquisitions in the last year, Twin Strata, cloud, Maginatics, cloud, spanning, cloud, right? Each one of them, path to the cloud, but then spanning's interesting because it's actually cloud to cloud. So I'm looking much further out as well yeah. and making sure that we're buying that future because I want to be the safety net for customers. So you don't just want to have the checkbox for path to the cloud, you want to pave a road. Yeah, exactly. And then the other one is just to twist things upside down. Customers really want to say, hey, if I've got something in the cloud, the place I want to back it up or the place I want to archive it or restore it, is actually to the head office. So they're going to start to think of data centers as actually their backstop as opposed to <laughs> the front piece. So, so you'll see both models. We have to work within an environment that has this massive diversity. Great, Guy, really appreciate you coming on theCUBE and sharing. A lot on your plate, congratulations. Um, all flash arrays, obviously hot, extreme IO. You got the locomotive, and you got change moving fast. And you it's got the other here. stuff too. You've got a lot of stuff in your tool shed. I'm sure there's some tricks uh, we'll, we'll hear more later. Yeah, it's going to be a fun year. Anyway, Back church with president really of it. the core technology division EMC. Um, the engine innovation right here on theCUBE, sharing that with you. We'll be right back after this short break.